Hello. In our last screencast, we began to talk about the idea of modes and classes in R. One of the things I do need to, of course, remind everybody about is that the term or the, the function mode in, in R does not refer to the mode of a distribution, for instance. It is, in fact, trying to say the mode of, of an object, and that's the most atomic feature, essentially, of, of the object that we have here. Um, Similarly, most objects in R actually have an attribute which is, is generally called the class of the object. And that's usually something we're going to care a great deal about. Uh, and R has a bunch of fairly useful classes, uh, useful classes for statistical programming and, and statistical analysis and output. Usually those uh, different uh, object types, those different classes, have to do with the kind of analysis uh, you want to do. Uh, so even though you're going to call generic functions or, or functions that, uh, you know, something like mean or summary, they will provide very different sorts of output depending on the, the type of object that you're using. Um, <clears throat> and so we've already seen this for a couple of things. We've seen the uh, mode of, of A, uh, which is our vector mode of uh, D, which uh, is also numeric, even though D is a matrix. And then, of course, we could do class of D and see it's a matrix. Um, we also computed mean underscore C, I believe. Uh, and we can ask, well, what's the class of that? And not surprisingly, this is also just going to be a number. It's just stored as a number in this case. But that's simple enough. Um, and of course, just as a reminder, in case this is a little unfamiliar, depending on your background, um, it is important to recognize that mode and class are not the same thing. Modes are sort of these basic atomic structures. Um, and we're going to see that we have like things like integers. We call it numeric, but essentially double floating point numbers. Vectors, uh, matrices. We're going to have characters. We're going to have some, a couple of other important ones. Functions are, in fact, a uh, uh, particular one, uh, although they're a class. Um, but we will see where, where these goes. Um, the, Important classes that we're going to use are, like I said, are numeric, matrix, character. There's going to be the all-important one of the data frame. That's really what your data is going to be stored of. And you can almost think about this as like an Excel-like sheet. Um, there's some other important ones that we'll use, like formula, uh, which is for like a, a, a mathematical formula, uh, or what you can think about as your model. Uh, and then things like list and factor, which we will learn about. So let's just do some simple ones. So let's create another vector, but in this case, instead of that vector being uh, a filled with numbers, we're going to be filling it with the names of cities. So these are essentially with a set of strings, or what in R is called characters. And I'm going to start using the R script and just submitting line by line. And the way I can do that is you can either highlight the full line, uh, or in many GUIs you can just have your cursor on that line. And in the Mac OS GUI, uh, it's command return. Um, I believe it's usually Control R in Windows, um, but it may double, you may need to check on your GUI. So we now have cities, and of course, if we go to our console window, go cities, we get we get um, the names of these four cities. Um, now, this may do some things by default in a in a way that may seem odd to you. So, for instance, if you go length, you may say, "Oh, is this going to give me the length of each string in this?" in this vector that I've created. But in fact, that's just going to tell you the number of elements in your vector cities. If you actually want to count characters, you actually have to use the ncar number of characters, and that will give you the element by element number of characters uh, in each string that you have. So that's a small thing. Now we can ask, OK, well, what's the mode of cities? And it's going to be character, because of course, these are essentially strings. And in this particular case, we will also get the same thing when we ask for class. But let's do something a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's add a second vector, uh, but a vector of, of strings, so, oops, which we call rivers. And again, if we look at, at rivers here, can clean that up, just make it a little bit easier. Rivers, we have our four rivers that are each associated with, with one of those cities. Um, and of course, this will also be class character and mode character. But what happens if we create a matrix of two columns, where the first column is the names of the cities, and the second column is the name of the rivers? So we now have cities.rivers. Um, well, if we go mode of that, ask yourself what you think you'll get. 
and hopefully you guessed character. But the class is matrix. Okay, so matrix does not just refer to numbers, but it's actually sort of the structure of the data types. So our data type was character, but when you have two vectors, each of character, and we put them together, we're putting them together into a matrix. So we look at cities rivers, and we see it's organized very much like that matrix D that we saw over here. So they're both matrices, but the actual underlying data type, the mode, is quite different for these two. So another type of object that we're going to use a lot, eventually in this uh, class, might not be in the first few weeks, is something called the formula uh, class. And so we might want to express some simple formula. So here is an example of a, of a formula. So we may have something called model.1 or model underscore 1, whatever we want to call it. Um, we, here's our assignment operator like before. And here's this sort of two-part thing. And we're saying here's our left-hand side of the equation. So uh, often in statistics we think about it, this as the response variable. Or you can think of it as you know your f of x or how you want to think about it, your function of x, and then your uh, dependent, uh, your uh, explanatory variables or independent variables. Uh, and here this tilde is basically saying that y here, this variable y that has not yet been created, is modeled as a function of x1 plus x2 plus x1 interacting with x2. And we'll worry about the interaction operator later. But this, more importantly, is saying that this whole thing is a formula. We know it's a formula because of this tilde here, being uh, basically saying that uh, it, it provides r with the knowledge that you're expressing that. So if we do that, and we just go model 1, we just get that out. And of course, we can go mode of model one. It's going to just be called, but that's not really important for it here. Uh, and if we go with this, it'll be formula. Um, and we can do other things, like we can ask about the terms uh, in the model, which we'll come back to and just tell us the attributes of it. This is actually more than I wanted you guys to see, but this will just give you a little bit of things. And to push you into the forward, it's going to give you something about what we're going to call the design matrix that we're going to work with a lot later in this class, statistically. But the rest of the output is not so important for the for the moment. Um, and it's often going to be useful. Uh, while you can often write formula objects directly into your call to do your statistical analysis, sometimes they're very long or you have to do complex fittings. And so it's important to separate the formula object. And that's a useful thing to be able to do and to update. OK, we're going to finish this here. And when we continue, we'll talk about the actual work, our workspace and the objects that we've created in them and what we do with those.